Hello Roanoke County, we're here today at the Regional Fire and Rescue Training Center. We'll be joining recruiting class 38 on one of their EMS lab days where they'll be practicing trauma and breathing scenarios, lifting and other important skills. Let's go join them. Assess his breathing, so take this and you'll listen to his lung sounds. And while she's doing that, I'll go ahead and check. Uh, we're going to go right over here. All right, you have check clear pulses. Lung sounds. She's holding direct pressure on his ankle. I'll start at the head. Make sure there's nothing going on his head. So we're here at the training facility and I just helped with a trauma scenario where the team was working on a patient who had two gunshot wounds. So we went through a list of things that they have to do when they roll up on a trauma scenario and I helped with a few things. Of course, they did the bulk of the work because they actually know what they're doing. So this academy has recruits that are from the city of Roanoke, the city of Salem and Roanoke County. We all participate together. Uh, it's a very efficient way to do our training. And so these folks are gonna be working together in the field after they graduate. So it's always a good idea anytime we can train together. And so we just, we do it as a regional approach. We are fire and rescue, uh, so we do EMS, we provide emergency medical services as well as fire and other kinds of hazards. But really that EMS portion makes up probably about 85% of what we do. So it's a very important part. They get trained in the academy to be a nationally registered emergency medical technician. Uh, you saw them verbalizing a lot because when they take their test, that's what they're going to have to do is to be able to verbalize and tell why they're doing these skills. And say it as you do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Scene safe. Uh, it is. The mechanism of injury is a motor vehicle crash. I'm going to go ahead and do manual stabilization of the C spine. Uh, so, C spine stabilized. General impression is this is um, patient's unresponsive. Ready, move. This is Samantha Rohr, one of the Roanoke County Fire and Rescue recruits. Uh, we're here today doing training. Do you want to explain what you just did in there, Sam? Yeah, sure. Scenario was we were dispatched to a motor vehicle crash. Um, my patient was a, on a motorcycle. And walk in, the first thing you have to do is your PPE and determine that the scene is safe. Uh, we're looking at mechanism of injury, making sure to maintain stabilization. Um, and in this scenario, the patient had a helmet on, so we had to properly remove that helmet to not further injury to the patient. After that, we're kind of getting a general impression um, based off of level of consciousness. And then we go through and assess any major life threats like their airway, breathing, circulation. Um, in this scenario, we did a rapid transport because there was an issue with breathing. Um, we obtained vital signs and then we do a secondary assessment, which is a head to toe assessment. So Samantha, why did you decide to get into fire and rescue? The biggest one is like, I really want to help people and be a part of something bigger than myself. Being part of the camaraderie, like the firehouse lifestyle was really appealing to me. And then also serving the community and giving back. You've been in training for a couple weeks now. What's been your favorite thing about it so far? My favorite thing has probably been uh, EMT and doing our ride along yesterday. We got to do our first ride along, which is really awesome because we've been learning a lot of new information, but actually getting to see how that is used in the field and apply some of that information was really exciting. Like being here, you know, learning so much information and going home and doing a lot of homework and studying, but to get it done in eight weeks, yeah. um, it's pretty fast, but it really, like you retain it way more than you would think that doing it that way. A live baby is gonna have more Airway obstruction is uh, a big portion of what they're doing in my station. Clearing an airway is uh, fundamental for pretty much anything else that they're going to end up doing. So it's important that they develop the foundations to know how to clear an airway and to uh, be able to identify the importance of that before they move on. Now, what's your favorite part of being an instructor here? Everyone that gets involved in this career, they do it because they want to help their community. So to see the recruits really eager to learn, um, wanting to be good at what they do, it makes my job a lot easier and it, it makes it fun. So if we have a patient that has fallen. Should I, should I fall? You can be as dramatic as you want. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> that was perfect. You come on this side, yep. Now from this position, do you know the best way to sit her up? You're gonna go under her arms. I'm gonna grab this wrist. I'm gonna grab this wrist. She's not going anywhere. Your call again. Ready, move. So I just participated in a lifting program as a person who has just fallen, and we got to learn some techniques of how to pick up a fall patient, whether they're responsive or unresponsive. And we also learned a couple different uh, things that might be in the environment or with the patient themselves that might impact how they're being picked up, and that impacts the techniques they're using. 
Uh, so that was very fun to participate in. It was great to be picked up multiple times. I don't think I've had that since I was a child. Am I going to live? We're going to do our best. All right, sir, we're going to place something behind your back. It's going to help us keep your back immobilized so you don't get hurt anymore, okay? Okay. Honestly, it's the relationships that you have with your class. I, there were people that I had never met before, before I started at this training center, and I met some of the best friends that I've ever had here. You And it's a little bit difficult now in EMS, but once you get through fire, you will not get through fire without your team, and you will become very, very close to the people in your in your group. Your reputation starts now. When we, when we get to wear these navy blue shirts, you become part of a family. And when you graduate, you're gonna become part of that family. Once you're in it, you're in it. The whole academy experience is 22 weeks. So this class started at the end of July and they graduate on December the 20th of this year. If someone was interested in becoming a fire and rescue recruit, what's one thing you would want them to know? Just that this is like the best job ever. I mean, I know that's probably like cliche. We hear that a lot, um, but I, I certainly think it is. Every day is different. Um, I think our schedule um, is attractive to a lot of people. It's a 24 hour shift, which is demanding maybe while you're there, but the way our schedule and our cycle rolls, you're gonna wind up with like a four day break, you know, and you only end up working like 10 days out of the whole month. You know, uh, yeah, you're working 24 hour days, but you're only doing that like 10 times. So I just think it's pretty neat. You're getting to help people. Um, you see some bad things, you see some tough things, um, but I think that's oftentimes counterbalanced with it's a very rewarding profession as well. Be good at your job. Work hard to be good at your job. And this job will be very rewarding. Coming from someone who worked a career before that wasn't so rewarding do what you can to, to be good at this job and it'll reward you back. We're wrapping up here at the Regional Fire and Rescue Training Center. It was great to see what the recruits do as they prepare for their EMS certification. If you want to see more of Fire and Rescue, you can find them on Facebook and Instagram, and I'll see you next time as we roam Roanoke County.